imagine there are two balls moving in the same direction along the same line and one of them has higher velocity compared to the others so the first moving ball is going to strike the slow moving ball at some point and it's going to transfer some of its kinetic energy to the slower moving ball and the slower moving ball is going to gain some speed and the faster moving ball is going to lose some of its speed and this is the core principle of energy transfer now let's look at what is heat conduction heat conduction is the transfer of thermal energy and since it's a transfer it has to happen between two particles or two sets of particles so in this case we have some particles that have more energies and we have some particles that have less energies in a substance and due to some interaction between these particles energy is going to be transferred so the keywords here are more energetic particles and less energetic particles and their interaction so we're going to focus on the interaction uh, a bit later but let's talk about what do we mean by more energetic particles so if, if a group of particles have more energy we actually mean kinetic energy so they have higher amount of kinetic energy and this means they are at a higher thermal state or they are at a higher temperature and the less energetic particles would be consequently at lower temperature and that is why there is heat transfer. Now let's look at an example of heat conduction. Imagine you have a solid metallic bar and you are heating the left end of the bar. So heat is going to propagate from the left end towards the right end. And this is because now there is a temperature gradient because the left end is at higher temperature which is driving this heat conduction. Let's look at another example. Imagine you have a stainless steel cooking pot that is being heated on the stove. So the bottom of the pot is being heated and it's slowly rising in temperature and this is actually heat conduction. And this heat is going to heat up the water that you have inside the pot and raise its temperature and cause it to boil. Since there is no bulk motion in the water, that was heat conduction, but when it starts to boil, that's dominated by a different heat transfer mechanism called heat convection. Now let's look at how heat is uh, conducted through a solid. And if you zoom in in a solid, you are going to see a neat arrangement of molecules called a lattice. So imagine you are heating the solid from the right side of the screen and this heat energy is going to heat uh, these molecules and going to increase their kinetic energy so they're going to start to vibrate in every direction up down top to bottom uh, side to side and from left to right and this vibration is going to be propagated into the next layer of molecules in the lattice and to the next layer and so on and this would result in the input heat energy to pass through this entire lattice and going to ultimately increase the kinetic energy of all the molecules and come out on the other end and that is this dominant mechanism of heat transfer in a solid and this mechanism is due to vibration of molecules in the lattice is called lattice vibration and this mechanism can occur in all type of solids whether they are metals or not for metals, we have another mechanism that we are going to look at now. For metals, we actually have a different heat conduction mechanism uh, because metals have a lot of free electrons. So imagine you are heating a metal that has many free electrons and this heat energy is going to increase this movement of all the electrons and they are going to strike each other and they are going to transfer these heat energy throughout the entire metal and this mechanism is called free electron movement and it only applies to metals so not for solids like ceramics or glass so we have to keep that in mind for liquids to have heat conduction there is actually a condition the liquid must not have any bulk motion so no part of the liquid can move relative to another part of the liquid so imagine you have some liquid in a pot and you are heating it up so it is going to 
conduct through the pot and it's going to start to increase the temperature of the liquid and if you zoom in to the liquid we're going to see a lot of liquid molecules that are moving in different directions with different velocities so there is a velocity distribution and you can actually calculate it from Boltzmann's velocity distribution so due to this movement of the molecules in different directions they are going to strike each other and these are called molecular collisions and when you are hitting all these liquid molecules you are actually causing the molecules kinetic energy to increase so the more heat you give there is going to be more molecular collision and that would mean there is going to be more energy transfer and this is the mechanism of how heat is conducted in liquids so we can summarize it as kinetic energy transfer through molecular collision which is the dominant mechanism for liquids but we must remember that there cannot be any bulk motion so if the liquid starts to boil that's actually heat convection not heat conduction and we can take a look at another example of heat convection imagine you have a hot plate at 700 degrees celsius and you are flowing cold air say at 20 degrees celsius and the plate is going to give some heat or transfer some heat energy to the air and that is not actually heat conduction it is heat convection which is a different mechanism heat conduction in gases occur just like heat conduction occurs in liquid you have molecules that are spaced further apart in gases because of the weaker force field compared to liquids so when you give these molecules some heat they are going to again collide with each other and they're going to transfer the heat energy and this whole gas is going to conduct heat but again we have to remember that there cannot be any bulk motion of the gas so the gas has to be contained or trapped in a container for heat conduction to occur now let's look at the summary of heat conduction heat conduction can be defined as heat energy transfer from more energetic particles to less energetic particles and in solids liquids and in gases there are different mechanisms of heat conduction in solids for both metals and non-metals the dominant mechanism is lattice vibration for metals alone the dominant mechanism is free electron movement and this free electron movement cannot be applicable to non-metals such as glasses or ceramics in liquids and gases the dominant mechanism is molecular collision but there cannot be any bulk motion if there is any bulk motion then that mechanism is a different one it's called heat convection and we are going to look at it in a different video the topic of the next video will be Fourier's law of heat conduction